Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today I have another ranked Skellige deck for you guys. And I do want to point out that Skellige really is not in a great place at the moment in terms of the meta. Skellige is, I would argue, the weakest faction. They're just not too great. But if you really want to play Skellige, then this is the sort of deck that you could use. And the idea behind this deck is that it's a control deck with Jenge fret as a short round win condition and the problem with that is inevitably he gets caretakered or he gets nanekied or he gets katakan there's like lots of things that your opponent can kind of do to your Jenge that you need to be a little bit aware of um so the gist behind this deck is that we have control and we're going to use that to win a round and then going into the final round we want to play sigurdrifa into Jenge in order to resurrect him and he'll be stronger because we'll have played him before and that's how we win. Uh, some people might be like why do you not just run an Axeman deck but I actually find that the deck itself is better without Axeman and if you want to run Axeman you have to run Harold but if you're running Harold you can't use Kraken Crate as a target to draw to guarantee your Jenge. Um, so in my personal opinion I feel like the deck almost feels more successful if you don't run Axeman. So, the idea behind the deck is that we're going to control our opponent, so we have damage, we have Ragnarug and we have Drought, so we've got weather. We also have Burner Bran, again that's going to give us weather control, which is really nice. And then we have Ard for moving units around and damage, along with Marigold's Hailstorm, um, which we can basically use to try and row stack so that we can kill units with Hailstorm, or at least do a lot of damage. We have three Whale Harpooners. These allow you to move an enemy to this row on its side and damage it by the number of units on that row. So we can actually use these to set up row stacking. We have three Clandamon Pirates, which we're going to use to thin the deck, along with Roach, which we can thin out of the deck with our gold cards. And she also provides a little bit of extra tempo when you play a weather card, because weather cards will actually pull her out, which means you could open with a weather card and that would put four points on the board, stopping your opponent from just straight passing. We have Donna, which gives us a lock, uh, and then we have Jenge. Jenge, when you play him, you damage two allies by one and strength himself by two for each. So then he becomes a 14 strength unit. But because we have uh, Crack and Crate as our leader, deploy damage self by one, then play the highest loyal bronze or silver unit in your deck and strengthen it by three. Then if it does not damage itself, damage it by one. So Crack and Crate is actually going to also strengthen this dude by three, which means when we pull him out, he'll be a 17 and he'll also get damaged by one. Um, and if we're damaging this guy by one, it makes sense to run at least one clan and crate warcrier. Boost two damaged allies by half their power. So we can then play this to boost that 17, which would now be a 16 by half, giving it an extra eight. Um, and then if we happen to have a second damage unit, which we should do because this guy will have damaged something, then that's beneficial. The reason I'm only running one of these is because we're not really damaging ourselves a lot outside of Jenge, so you only need one. It's like a nice draw if you get it, and if you don't get it, then that's okay too. On top of that, we have three Clan Drummond Shield Maidens. Deploy damage a unit by two. If it was already damaged, play a Clan Drummond Shield Maiden from your deck. So we'll use these to thin our deck and to target the uh, damage opponents, basically do some more damage because this is a control deck. Um, and the thing to be aware of here is that once we've thinned these from our deck, our marching orders will then guarantee the draw of our Sigurd Drifa, which means that we can basically guarantee Sigurd Drifa's draw, which is gonna allow us to resurrect Jenge, who will be at, you know, at least 17 strength at that point in the final round, which is a really, really nice power play. We also have one Alza Slender, because this is a control deck, and a First Light. Uh, and then I, finally I've got three Savage Bears, and these are kind of quite changeable in this deck. Alternatively, you know, you could run the Clan Brockvar Hunters. I feel like they're pretty decent in this deck as well. They are the ones that are fives and deal four damage, uh, deploy damage unit by four. Savage Bears are susceptible to locks, whereas Hunters aren't, so if you feel like you're running into a lot of Radovids, that's good. But then Savage Bears are really good for setting up your Shield Maidens, although you have more than enough other ways of dealing damage to set up to thin those two. So, you know, maybe you don't want to run Savage Bears. The difference between this and this, this is a straight 9 points, and this can potentially be more than 9 points, it's a 7. If it gets, you know, locked, it's just a 7, so... You you know, you, you get less power, but if you can get a few hits out of it, it can become more valuable than Clan Brockvar Hunter. So this is a kind of more risky card to play, whereas this is, is safer. You could also, I guess, if you wanted to, play the Clan Brockvar Archer, damage three units by one. These are good against things like Rot Tossers, but you can always target a Rot Tosser, uh, a Cow Carcass with the Shield Maiden. So, you know, I feel like either the Bears or the Hunters are good. I guess you could also go Axemen if you want, but I feel like Axemen... They, when you run Axemen, people spend too much of their time worrying about the positioning of their Axemen. And they're quite easily countered, and when you first play them, they're a low-tempo play. Whereas all of these have a bit more tempo, and I think in the current meta, 
you know, a little bit more tempo is in fact better. Uh, yeah, so that's the deck. If you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. And without further ado, I'm going to jump into a ranked game and I'll showcase this deck in action for you. Nothing like a dwarf to get you to a tight spot. For Skellige's glory! Okay, so we're up against Bruverhoog, which could be dwarves. It could be weather. You know, it could be a lot of things. In terms of our mulligan, we want to get rid of one Demon Pirate. If we have multiple Shield Maidens, we'd want to get rid of those. If we had Roach, we'd want to get rid of that. Three Savage Bears, a Harpooner, Sig. Sig is good. We want Sig or Marching Orders, ideally. Marigolds. We can probably afford to mulligan a bear. We don't need this many. Ard is nice. Um, Alza's is good against Dwarves, because we can use it to clear. Do we mulligan another bear? We do risk pulling Roach at or Jenge. I think we mulligan another bear. There we go, we've got some weather. Nice. That's the kind of thing I was looking for, basically. Okay, he's opened with just plain weather. We could just dry pass him here and get two card advantage. Which is kind of good for us. So, let's do that. He's not running Roach, so this is what I mean by people just opening with weather. You open with weather, you've not put any points on the board. I've given him an easy round, which is kind of what weather wants. Because then they can have a long round. But, you know, we've got weather as well. Long rounds are also good for us. So, personally, I feel like this is fine. No, if anyone's got any hooch left. Yeah, and it looks like this is movement as well. So this is movement, uh, Scoia'tael. Weather control Scoia'tael. Giving him the round that easy may be a mistake. But, on the flip side, I feel like it's, I feel like it's okay. We didn't draw poorly. We can mulligan the Dimmon. And then we got a Shield Maiden, which is nice. Is he gonna play into this round or is he gonna pass me? If he passes me, we just play the Dimmon. Okay. So... Yaven, which will then give him weather. So he's just drawn gold weather into his hand, that's his objective there. In which case we possibly want to row stack, but if we're row stacking, we need to be a little bit careful. The alternative is we can like play on two rows, and that's an option. Uh, it's not a bad option either. We're currently ahead, which is also good. So let's just thin our, let's just thin our demons. I could have also played the Savage Bear. The question is whether he wants to play into this round. The answer is he probably wants to pass this round because he's just given me 12 points from Yavin and play into a different round. Okay, so that tells me he intends to play this round. We didn't find our first light, which is kind of awkward. I will play my bear now. Get that on the board. And we can kind of just straight kill this. Um, alternatively, we can kill it with shield maidens. So let's do that because it also thins the deck. Cards that we don't really want to deal with in this matchup. Marksman is a good example of, of that. And then we'll Alza's this one. We could weather it. Uh, if we weather it, it's not going to die straight away. But we, we kind of want a thin roach anyway. And this looks like it's going to be a long row, so let's just play our weather for now. Yaven being injured is quite good if we want to play War Criers. We have options to kind of buff two units. So those are going to die. This is kind of okay though. We can move this onto the back row with a harpooner, but then we, we risk, you know, taking damage ourselves, which we maybe don't want to do. We have an Alzers we could use. We have... I feel like we probably do want to use the harpooners to kind of move units about. It's not a bad play. We'll pull this guy to the back row. Get extra tick on the go. It means he's taking six per turn when we're only taking four, which is okay. And we have our, our crack and crate up our sleeve for a big tempo play. So I think we're actually good to play into this round. Spotted! Every turn at the start of your turn, move a random unit on another row on this side to this row. Gain three armor. So I guess he's trying to stack my rows is his objective there. So that he wants to marigolds. In which case we don't want to stack rows. So potentially we could kill this. Mm. I feel like that's not a bad strategy, right? This is clearly a setup for... It's clearly a setup for Marigolds. Whoa. Okay, he's cleared weather from one row. I guess he'll start stacking front row. So we'll pull this to the back row. Make sure we still get our weather tick. If he stacks the front row, though, we have 
marigolds, Never which is kind of fine as well. Broken. And you can see, yeah, he's, he's trying to keep his units out of the weather and out of the tick. There's nothing really great to lock here. We can ard, um, but I'd rather wait till he plays some more units, and I'd rather ard after I marigolds. So, for now, let's play this. You've got the heart. Into this. We'll hit this and... Ideally, I don't want the five to be hit. Mm, actually, I don't want to hit this at all. We'll hit this. Actually, we'll hit these two. There we go. I made a decision. I'm trying to work out what I want to boost with my Warcryer. And I want to boost, I think, the six and the 16. So, I'm just kind of figuring that one out. The thing is, he might have Sheldon, which moves all the units to different rows, which would affect my Hailstorm. We'll just lock this. Uh, what do I want from his graveyard? It doesn't really matter. We'll take a... We'll take a Merc. It might be a useful res. Although, I don't think that we're gonna res it. Dance of death. Ha! Ha! So I think now is probably a good time to Marigolds. Because if he's gonna move all of these with Sheldon, that's something that we're kind of aware of. So let's just do that. Get a decent amount of value out of it now. Yeah, there's Sheldon. So that's what I expected. And because I expected this to happen, you had to preempt that with the with the Marigolds. You had to decide, you know, when was the best play time to play the Marigolds. Uh, we'll play the the Warcryer now. Although actually, I should have waited with the Warcryer until after he played his Marigolds. Oh, no, no, I should have done it before the Marigolds. That was smart. I don't know why you played into this round. So I take weather damage, then he takes weather damage, and I win the round. So we pass here. And now we go into the final round with two card advantage. Uh, he shouldn't have played into that round. At, like, he played into a round when he had a, a disadvantage cards. He played Yavin to try and gain cards, but it still, you know, wasn't enough for him. Um, and this is just a case of kind of knowing your matchup, really. We'll mulligan this, and there's the forfeit. We didn't even have to play into the next round. So that is the, the movement mirror. Um, and as you can see, it went pretty well for us. So that was pretty great, to be honest. We'll send a GG. And uh, I'll jump into another game and I'll showcase this deck once again for you guys in action. Not all battles need end in bloodshed. I'm great! Okay, so we're up against Reveal. Reveal doesn't typically play weather, so we can mulligan our first light. First things we'll do is blacklist Dim and Pirate. Then we'll get rid of Roach, because keeping a First Light is better than keeping a Roach. We have Marching Orders and we have Sig, which aren't, isn't great, but we can mulligan one of those later, because that's a round three card. Um, and all in all, this hand is pretty okay. We got some Weather. We got some Bears. We got some Dimmons. You know, pretty good. And now we can just straight kill this with Thinning. Did I mention that our shields are our ramparts, you guys? I'm not sure if you knew. But uh, our shields may in fact be our ramparts. So that's now on six. He's gonna reveal and damage me, basically. We have a lot of units that can take a hit. So I think for now we'll just play another bear. We also wanna play the demons this round and we would like to play Jenge. There goes the reveal. He's gonna take two, so that's kind of okay. We're gonna take eight though. Not great. But we can play Ragnarok now. There's a lot of units on different rows and this is gonna give us a decent amount of points. And hopefully encourage him to pass the round. There's the pass. And so here's the, the awkward position because we haven't played Jenga yet. We haven't played Jenga yet. We're one card down, but we have a lot of tempo. So I think we can play into this next round. Thin our Dimmon Pirates. Uh, try and get our Jenge out and potentially, okay, I risk drawing a Dimmon here. So I'm not going to mulligan because I can always mulligan, like I say, Sigdrifa after this round. So I think we play into this round basically um, and then kind of go from there. So that means we're opening with a bear. And then on the final round, we can go for our Sig tempo play. He locked, he locked my bear. Rude. Uh, we can play this on the... Back row, we probably don't want to roast stack. We have Marigolds, so we can try and roast stack him a little bit. We have Ard, so we want to kind of see where he's playing his units. He now knows that we have Ard, uh, which is, you know, a thing. Let's do this now. 
into Jenge. Target this dude. And this dude. And there we go. And then, you know, with the clan and crate warcry, we've got a lot of points in hand. So we've got, got, got some good options. He doesn't know we have marigolds. So that's nice. He knows we have marching orders. He doesn't know we have sig. He's played Cynthia and Orcs. He hasn't played any gold cards. We've played Ragnarug. And we've played our leader. I don't work for free. Okay, so he's going to be using this basically as a target for his spotters. That's kind of his plan here. Um, the question is, do we want to wait for his spotters? Or do we want to move Leo is the question. I think we want to move Leo. Because uh, we can always push the spot spotters back row with Ard. So this is kind of okay. What is this actually going to pull me? This will pull me a Harpooner or Donna. That's actually not a bad pull. Because we still have Sig. So maybe we go for that. Harpooner. Pull this to the, the middle row as well. Giving us good value on our Marigolds. Alberich. So he's going to see everything in my hand here. He's going to have perfect information. Which means he shouldn't... He should stop playing things in the back row. But if he plays things in the back row, I can always... Uh, oh, I only revealed one card. So if I play this this turn, it's worth 4, 5, 6, 7... 13. It's worth 13. That's worth 15. I think we can do this. I think this is okay. I probably should have actually boosted the bear because it rounds up. Oh no, it rounds down. Actually, no. I thought it rounded up because, you know, uh, Marigold's rounds up but it runs down so that's the thing so we're 11 points ahead we have a 15 point play in marigolds and we have a 15 point play in uh odd so we have two good tempo plays and then hopefully we'll pass with points ahead so he has to keep playing cards that's not really a great summoning triangle like sig is a much better summoning triangle so let me think, if we push units to the back, we'd put, but we'd, they'd take three damage. But what we can do is hit this one, this one, and this one, which actually does give us a little bit more value in our Marigolds. And we still get the same amount of value in Ard. So we're 18 points on him now. I don't think he has an 18 point play in hand. I shall do what I must. Here, here. You can reveal my last card. And your cards. You can show me what you got. Off to the front yet again. Yeah, still not enough points. So we'll Marigold's him. <laughs> so I know he has 10 points in hand, but that's not enough. He's 14 down, so if he plays another spotter, that's tying him with me. So we are in a really good position with this match. Come on then. What you got? And he knows I have Sig, and he knows I have Jenge. We could have maybe tried to push for the 2-0. Like we know he has he's on 56. And he's just passed, he's just given up the game. And uh Yeah, so that was that was pretty good. I mean, the thing is at this MMR, like people are playing Reveal and dwarves and stuff it's a bit of a weird place. Like this is the kind of situation where you can get away with running Skelliger. But I think as we creep up towards 4k. Skelliger isn't going to be as successful, but this is kind of the best Skelliger deck that I have. Like I say, Savage Bears, you can definitely switch out for maybe Brock for Hunters, for example. Um, and I think going with this control strategy is good just because you saw the kind of tempo plays that we had. And, you know, you need tempo plays in this meta because everyone else has like large point bronze plays. So keeping up with that is quite challenging in Skelliger. And I think like this is the best way to do it. If you disagree and you think Axeman is better, like, you know, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what kind of Skelliger decks you guys are running. Um, and if you've enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up button. Beyond that, you can always subscribe to the channel and you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagris, and on Twitter, 
at Jagaris, so you can follow me on all of those things. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day, and hopefully I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!